anterior cruciate ligament injury risk reduction with topical gears ACL tube. The three major bones of the knee joint are the femur, tibia, and fibula. The medial and lateral collateral ligaments stabilize side-to-side -side knee motions and the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments stabilize front-to-back knee motions. The knee is the most common joint to suffer a severe injury. Each year there are over 250,000 ACL injuries and 125,000 surgical reconstructions that lead to an early onset of knee arthritis. Athletes with an ACL reconstruction are 2 to 15 times more likely to tear their ACL for a second time or the ACL on their other leg, thus ACL injuries are both common and debilitating. Female athletes have a 4 to 6 times greater incidence of tearing their ACL than their male counterparts and the current ACL injury risk is near 1%, which is 1 out of every 100 athletes or 3 ACL injuries per 10,000 athletic exposures where an athletic exposure is defined as a practice or competition. The majority of ACL injuries are from a non-contact mechanism indicating that an athlete's own movement style is a leading risk factor. The primary non-contact mechanism of ACL injury stems from a neuromuscular control issue of the lower extremity joints that allows the knee to rotate or bend inwards called dynamic knee valgus. A simplified measurement of this angle is overlaid on the left. The ACL tube consists of a form-fitting thigh sleeve containing two buttresses that place topical pressure on the thigh muscles to enhance the athlete's awareness and control of knee alignment and movement. The immediate effects of the ACL tube on knee alignment and motion can be visualized with the performance of two simple movements, a single leg squat and a single leg landing. After the athlete performs these movements with only the sleeve of the ACL tube, the buttresses are appropriately placed and then the athlete walks a short distance and repeats the two movements. This field demonstration is of a young female athlete without a history of injury that normally presents dynamic knee valgus during athletic performance. The video on the left is a front view of a single leg squat performed with the sleeve only, and the video on the right is of the same athlete performing the squat with the sleeve and buttresses after walking a short distance. On the left, you can visualize the athlete's hips and knees rotating inwards in a poor vertical knee alignment, whereas on the right, improved movement control and vertical knee alignment that yields a 71% reduction in the dynamic knee valgus angle while performing with the buttresses in the ACL tube. Landing on a single leg from a horizontal distance equal to one leg length further demonstrates these improved leg movements, but also provides a visualization of the relationship between knee valgus and dynamic trunk control. On the left, the video shows that poor vertical knee alignment also coincides with the trunk rotating inwards and down, presenting a challenge to, to dynamic balance, whereas on the right, improved leg and trunk movement control coincides with improved dynamic balance and an 80% reduction in the dynamic knee valgus angle. From this field demonstration, we can conclude that wearing the ACL tube with the buttresses during these two dynamic tasks enhance the athlete's awareness and control of knee alignment and movement. Given these immediate performance changes, the ACL tube may be a valid intervention to reduce ACL injury risk. By plugging the ACL tube into this ACL injury risk reduction model, it is proposed that this intervention is able to mitigate the intrinsic neuromuscular risk factors that cause dynamic knee valgus during athletic exposures. In a prospective study, 64 female soccer athletes performed their preseason training while wearing the ACL tubes one to three hours a day, three to four times a week over nine weeks. ACL injury prevalence was tracked throughout the season and compared with published data of age and sex matched soccer athletes. No ACL injuries were sustained throughout the season after training with the ACL tubes, which equates to an ACL injury rate of 0%. The table below compares this injury rate to the injury rates of 10 published studies to determine whether the ACL tube intervention reduced the risk of an ACL injury. Under the risk reduction columns, the ARR is the absolute difference in ACL injury rates between each control group and the group that trained with the ACL tubes, and the RRR is this difference expressed as a percentage. The absolute ACL risk reduction ranged from 0.5 to 3.1 and was significantly lower in 8 of the 10 comparisons equating to a 100% relative risk reduction. 
Translating these risk reduction numbers into a degree of program effectiveness stems from the variable located in the last column of the table. The NNT, or the number needed to treat, is a medical variable estimating the number of athletes needed to participate in the ACL tube intervention program to prevent one ACL injury, which was calculated to range from 32 to 189 athletes. On average, the number of athletes required to be trained with the ACL tube to prevent one ACL injury was 92, which is 4% more effective than other ACL risk reduction programs and indicates that the ACL tube may be a valid neuromuscular intervention for the ACL injury risk reduction program. Research studies investigating the clinical, biomechanical, and preventive effects of the ACL tube are ongoing, and please visit www.topicalgear.com for more information.